that eyeball monster just burst out from like a kiosk key thing to attack them. Mm -hmm. There's no explanation. They theorize that maybe he just burst out and be like, hey, you want to talk? Mm. But no. Instead he burst out and was just extremely creepy. Like, he was just like vibrating and he was just like... <laughs> And attacking them and being really creepy and John really like, likes monsters like that because he acts them out. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Like when I attacked him, I just like went up right close to him and was like. <laughs> 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 the goblins had basically indicated they should go south, and they thought, okay, what the heck? And as they were walking away from that, the eyeball monsters attacked them for no reason. Yeah, okay. he jumped out of a kiosk. Like, I'm a monster. Okay, a kiosk. Yeah. We're, we're in basically some kind of mall or something like that. Yeah. Ancient food mall. I've been sort of suspecting it from almost the beginning because it looked like a food court when we first... Mm -hmm. a I thought it might be a restaurant or something, but... Then there was a lot of variety of stuff. Anyway. Well, it ended up being too big. Uh, and then there was the speculation that it was a brothel. I don't this, remember that speculation, but okay. Well, it was just <laughs> really the statue of the, the buxom Ood. Oh, yeah. Mm. That was a... Yeah. I think this room is like four squares wide and like eight squares long or something. Mm. Mm. Well, but the map I'm even using is it's five meter squares, so basically oh. each square is five squares. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because otherwise it would just be too big to yeah, put yeah. on a piece of great paper. So anyway, the fight began right, right from the get-go. Um, there were some technical difficulties, though, that, that slowed down getting started, which resulted in us doing a whole lot of role-playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sort of retroactive, you know, this is our characters chatting during downtime stuff. Yeah, there, there was a number of things. For one thing, it was the first time we played since our basement had flooded, and we played in the basement, so there was stuff that had to be hooked up that wasn't mm -hmm. hooked up and stuff. Yeah. And... Um, I don't know, there, there might be some some conflict between Cricket and Aurora in the future because Aurora started talking about wanting to free Cricket. <laughs> Cricket doesn't mm, want this? No. Why? Because she's not supposed to be. Oh. <laughs> she wasn't made to be free. Yeah. That would ruin everything. But anyway. She wouldn't have a purpose anymore. Yeah. Talking about freeing a domestic is like talking about enslaving a real person. It's just wrong. So anyway. Mm. Chaos. Chaos. Monster. Eyeball. So, right off the bat, it did this thing uh, which attacked our wills and dazed us all. Yeah, it has this big eye, and the eye was like not like a consistent eye. It was always like changing, like, you know, swarming in and like having weird stuff, and it just mesmerized them all. So Cricket spent almost the entire combat dazed. I think I did spend the entire combat dazed. Things that was my experience with that kind of monster. Things kept happening. Oh, actually, it was I, didn't, all right, I didn't though. use the official stats oh, for that monster. It was alright, though, because Cricket's a ranged character, so she didn't have to move. It didn't really affect her too much. <clears throat> so, let's see if I remember the sequence of events. Well, almost everyone got dazed or stunned the first round, actually. Mm, yeah. So basically, they lose the whole first turn. And then... It did some other attack. I can't remember. I don't remember just how the, it, how the sequence of events fell out, but there was... But people were dazed, and then the second round, everyone was... Like, half of people were... Everyone was stunned, and the second round, like, half of everyone was, like, dazed or something. Yeah. No, it wasn't dazed. It was something else. Thank you. But I just kept doing this awful stuff. Yeah. But then... It got a hold of Darien, and it landed both of its claw attacks, and pulled him right up to Croces. his face. Croces. Yeah, sorry, Croces. <laughs> pulled him right up to his face and did like a weird swirly eye madness thing, and he, and stunned him. He was stunned and blinded for round one round, and then he was blinded save ends. Mm -hmm. So that really sucked, and it did a lot of damage, because he, mm. he did extra damage with that attack, so... They discover that you don't want him to hit you with both claw attacks, because that sucks. Oh, Cricket got to use our new encounter power right off the bat. Um, it's that thing where if an ally misses, you can shoot the thing and make him redo it. Yeah. 
That was fun. It's awesome. It's an out of out of turn attack, yeah. and also allows another attack. So awesome. Yeah. What did you use that on? The eyeball guy. It's right. If that was the first time he attacked, yeah. That's why he didn't land two hits. But then the second round, he landed two hits or something mm. like that. Uh, no, it was it was Croesus missed the eyeball thing, and oh, that, right, that right, triggered right. that triggered my thing. I got to shoot the eyeball thing, which made Croesus's attack succeed. Right. Yeah. There was a couple close successes that only succeeded. Like there was a there was a couple things that only succeeded because of Cricket's buffs, and a couple things that only succeeded because of Aurora's buffs. And there was one that they hit him by one, and they he was had like a buff from Aurora and a buff from Cricket and a buff from Croesus, and so and they just hit him. Mm-hmm. But overall, it was a fun combat, but I'm having a hard time remembering a lot of specifics I, about it. I don't it think it really taxed you guys very much. Like, yeah. It, it had some freaky attacks, but you didn't... You kept it pretty locked down, because yeah. it, it was a single monster, so it was always, like, had some penalty, and, like, it even... It had an action point it could have spent, but I was always saving it for when it wasn't, like, horribly crippled, yeah. and then that never came, and then it died. But uh, Cricket kept shoving it back. A couple squares, couple squares, couple squares. Yeah, they did knock it off the kiosk, but it didn't was fall it a solo? Yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing about solos. They need a way to get out of conditions. <laughs> like teleporting. They do, they do because, <laughs> you know, their, their saves are so high. Mm. But they need another one like that, or like, like have yeah. multiple rounds, because they really get screwed. Yeah, solos are hard to do it in general. I mean, fourth edition has done better than any previous edition for single enemies. Like third edition, your single enemies are basically screwed. Yeah. I don't know. That wastrel did quite a number on us. That's because it was that's because it was brokenly mm-hmm. annoying. Mm. And like it basically, if I hadn't changed the rules, it would have been a TPK and the lamest TPK ever. Mm. So it sort of was like, yeah, it, it was sort of binary. Like it had to kill you all now button, and, <laughs> it, and that's the only reason it was a threat, really. And immunities, right? But it, it, it never used its kill you all button, so it might as well not have had it. No, it didn't. It it it. You, mo- you modified it so it couldn't couldn't uh, do it constantly. Yeah. Every round. Yeah. But the other thing was um, when you first fought it, it had a bunch of minions. It had a fake version of itself, whatever. When it actually just attacked you one on one, just and it, and you figured out where it was. It was actually outside. Like yeah. once you saw through its disguise, you just went on it and you just pounded it and it died. Mm. So I don't know. Single enemies. Are usually pretty vulnerable yeah. to any any game that has status effects. But anyway, yeah, they, they defeated it fairly handily. But um, it's interesting when it died; it just lay there twitching for a mm-hmm. long period of time. And I, I just kept like I just like laid back in my chair and was like twitching for a long time and creeping. Oh, that was role playing. <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> so after we're, we're done fighting it. We investigated the kiosk it came from. With the cortex near the kiosk, all these various spigots and fluid dispensers and stuff started spurting and bubbling and, and whatnot. It's all kind of wrecked up. But yeah, it was some sort of a drink stand. And these various spigots and whatnot were like making drink fresh. So there was no, it wasn't like 2,000 years past its best yeah, by yeah, okay. Yeah, they were spawning the liquid. Yeah. And um, so we, sp- coke. we spent a ridiculous amount of time mixing drinks. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. They spent like forever. Like, first Aurora tried to mix some drink and it was disgusting. I said it tasted like um, crushed Tylenol mixed with cayenne pepper. <laughs> Hank liked it though. Yeah, Hank, after drinking the whole thing, he's like, I kind of got used to it. You get used to it. Yeah. But, um, Cricket yeah. tried to make something that tasted better and succeeded. She didn't do very well, but she she got yeah. it so it only tasted like Tylenol. It's not as good as it's supposed to taste, but yeah. they, they basically found out that the, the main ingredient was this like this uh, this liquid that um, um, improves your mental acuity, kind of wakes you up and, mm. and, and energy drink. But but you, but it tastes terrible, so you put all this stuff in it to like make it taste better. And uh, mm. they they managed to get a few uh, a few of those that are like actually like have effects, like basically potions out of it. They didn't do very well in there mixing it, so it tastes good. So they're all are horrendously awful tasting, but they still have these horrendously awful tasting potions now. Garana. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think for the benefit of the group and the experience, 
you need to mix up some horribly tasting drinks that, <laughs> that account for what they have in their inventory and such when they want to use them they have to drink it <laughs> you go oh you want to use that and you're like mm, maybe not it's pretty bad you might be able to because I'm pretty sure the taste of the taste of Tylenol is really just the taste of the, the pill right and so you can probably get some placebos somewhere maybe grind those up and uh, and when you die in the game you die in real life yeah. Yeah. We're gonna go to the natural. Conclusion you are poisoned by a giant spider. I got the idea. Going is there. way off. I would have personally no, make, made it, going made it so they made kiwi strawberry slug. You know, mm-hmm. that'd be a good flavor. You know, if you could just get over the slug, it's actually not bad. <laughs> Is there any sort of down in-game down like downside to these things? Like, do they have to do a, some kind of build check? It's just flavor. <laughs> no, it's just yeah, it's, yeah, yeah literally, it's just <laughs> flavor. <laughs> no, they don't have to. They don't have to will check it. Oh, you wretch everywhere, and it doesn't it's, work. It's not that gross. It's like it's just not yeah, very fun. It's like Buckley's, Tylenol, and cayenne. And we're the sort of players that we really would role play. You know, oh. if it came to it. You know, it's like, do you die or drink the disgusting thing? <laughs> <laughs> Would my character drink a disgusting thing? Well, probably. But yeah. anyway. And the other thing that, so they spent quite a bit of time. Someone told you to drink. Mm-hmm. Some drinks. And the other thing is, um, Krosis asked if there was any, or any uh, kava, which is this thing he's been going on about that the, the uh, Oblin drink. This, like... I don't know, he described it as like a mixture of like, it's like grease and turpentine, but you can't just like mix that up, you gotta like, it's gotta have been, it has to have been used and like, you know, used to like grease up some oblin first or whatever, I don't know, so he went on to this lengthy description yeah. of, of what it is, but they found some little containers under the counter of instant kava, <laughs> just add rubbing alcohol. And there was a dropping alcohol dispenser, so they mixed up some instant kava. And uh, I said, uh, it reminded him of kava. I mean, it's not kava, but it reminded him of kava. <laughs> so after that, we went south. Um, there had been a door that we had encountered down there before. Nice big double doors that we had decided against opening. And instead went off to meet Rip Roar. Uh, so we went yeah, they to, almost opened those doors. Yeah, we were so close. So we got to these doors. And now, Cricket has a little ritual called Comprehend Languages. Mm. So she, she, cast, she casts this so that she can read Oblin. Or not Oblin, um, Ood. And we walk past the room that contained a library of, of books, of history and knowledge and all that sort of stuff. Because we weren't really interested in that. Uh, and I went and went to the door, and there's a sign over the door. Exit. <laughs> In Ood. <laughs> yeah. I am. <laughs> it's so it, it's so it, you went through it? <laughs> yeah. There was some other stuff on there as yeah, well. Yeah, it said, like, thank you for visiting uh, the place of somebody's village. I forget what. Yeah. And the village at Southgate. <laughs> and, and this way to uh, Central Station. Mm. Nice. So we went through there. I just want, I just wanted to hear Rip Roar laugh. <laughs> he hasn't been around. We're worried about him. <laughs> you were worried about Rip Roar. Yeah, yeah. We, we're, we're worried he might have been hurt or something, or something's gone wrong. So I, I think Aurora actually wanted to go and check on him. Well, something she's like friends that. with him, yeah. isn't she? Yeah, but. So we go through the exit. Um. And there's a short hallway and some stairs and stuff, and, and we get into another mall-type place, which is more like the concourse of some place. You know, there's all these um, restaurant-type, fast-food restaurants with counters. You know, it's, it's more food court um, All the counters are blocked off by, an, by like a bluish, shimmering force field that exactly exists within the five meter radius of the cortex. So within five meters of their power source, there's <laughs> these force fields yeah. that block them from entering the... Oh, uh, just like Southgate. <laughs> so... We probably turned the force fields on when we turned on everything in that control yeah. center. But they didn't... I mean, that's easily circumvented. Oh, yeah. the, just don't bring the cortex near them and we can go through there. Mm. Mm. So... So we, we go and we sample some more foods 
Yeah, they went into a place called Awesome Wheat. I, I'd forgotten that, like, now he has comprehend languages. He gets to find out what these places are called. Oh. And they had, like, they didn't really have anything. They had a bunch of, like, ovens, and they had, like, fl- flour dispensers and water dispensers that just make flour. And they're like, wow, these, we can actually, like... If we could get these out of here, it's worth a lot, right? Like, because there's no, there's no magic at that level no. currently, right? Like it's yeah. medieval times, and they've got like flower, flower making magical lever, but it's big, and they couldn't easily get it out of the wall. Yeah. The canter of endless flower. Yeah. But if it turns out that we are in fact trapped down here forever, cricket can provide for everyone. Yeah, mm-hmm. you could. But there wasn't really any, there was just like some dust. Someone made a really good perception check and found some dust that they thought might have been like baked goods once. Yeah. But and then they went across the, the way to uh, the restaurant. Uh, uh-huh. That uh, It was this restaurant that had a bunch of, these bunch of vats with this really hot liquid in them. They're still hot. And you pulled this lever and it like dropped some sort of weird glop into the thing and it fizzled up to the top and then it came out and it was like this big deep fried hunk of like delicious stuff. I said the closest thing is just imagine a doner all mixed up into a blob and that's the closest thing to it. And each lever made a different delicious yeah. treat and and Hank, Hank Hank loved it. He was mm. like, sweet, I'm eating this. I'm making like five more and taking them with me. This place is great. And the name of the place? Uh, yeah, they, uh, the place Salty Fatty Tasty. <laughs> so they 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 really enjoyed Salty Fatty Tasty. Well, at least Hank did. And yeah, I don't think Cricket had any of that. So did you beforehand have all the names written down and in their Ood counterparts? No, because I didn't think they could read Ood. No, mm. <laughs> so you had to come up with a lot of fun. Yeah, because yeah, they didn't even ask till afterwards what that place was called, and I was like, uh, salty, fatty, tasty. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you come up with the restaurants mm. beforehand. Uh, ish. So, had a list of ideas. So we have now. Um, looted, sampled the wares, whatever, of three different eating establishments, and we'd skipped over the library of ancient knowledge. Yeah, they spent their whole time making weird food, and like, someone's like, hey, maybe we should read all that library, that old ancient dude knowledge. Nah, I just want some more of this stuff. Nah. Uh, uh, so we proceeded onwards, and I don't think we went into any of the other stores before we encountered the security box. Yeah, there were these security constructs. Um, they activated when they got nearby. With the cortex, cortex activated it, <laughs> and one was starts intoning in ood. Yeah. You will be incarcerated for your vandalism of awesome wheat. You will be incarcerated for your theft from salty, fatty, tasty. Yeah. Listing out all of their offenses. Yeah. Did anyone be like, no, no, we paid for that? Cricket was the only one that could understand. And as party leader. And as the most intelligent party member, I immediately figured out what we needed to do to resolve this. Smash them? No. Well, eventually, yeah. Comply? No. <laughs> of course not. Um, first thing we need to do is get the cortex away from them, yes. and then they'll go inactive again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, I told them this. You know, that's what, that's what you do. <coughs> Grab the cortex and run. Um, but I think they went first, right? They went first, and I'd also... Because they're moving at the same time as you, and otherwise they'd be totally screwed, I said, they deactivate if they start their turn outside of the cortex. Or sorry, no, I'm sorry, they end their turn outside the cortex. So that even if you move the cortex away from them, if they can get back into the range before the end of their turn, they don't deactivate, because it would be happening at the same time. Yeah. But uh, it, it wasn't too, too hard. The, 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 there was one big one with gigantic manacles, basically. Yeah. The, the incarcerator, uh, security incarcerator construct. Yeah. And it came up, and it grabbed Croesus, and it grabbed Cricket, right? Yeah. And got them. And, and, and then it was like, all right, you will be incarcerated. And it tells, told the other ones, please subdue these other miscreants. And it just comes off to the main office, completely walking out of the... Out of the yeah. thing. So it just shut down right away. Yeah. <laughs> then the other ones went chasing after Hank because Hank ran away. Like the yeah. crappy, they aren't minions, but the, the, the lower minion yeah. type things. And uh, But Hank outrun them with a yeah. bunch of help. Like he got I, I a couple different a couple pushes ways. and stuff, and he, he, he outran them by one square. So mm-hmm. they, got, they basically didn't have to fight them. They just got away. So I guess I'm. Incarcerated for breaking the law. 
this is a this is a new thing for me. Uh, I didn't actually break the law because everybody here is all dead. I can't steal from people if they're dead, and it was it was Hank that was eating all of the stuff anyway. So these things are kind of dumb. And uncomfortable. Uh, well, uh, this place, yeah, it still sucks and I want to go home, but we're starting to find some interesting stuff. Like, there were these drinks and they tasted horrible, but they were good. And I feel good. I want more. It tastes gross, but yeah, they're good. And then this, like, food, I don't even know what it was, but it's delicious, and I just took a whole bunch with me, but <laughs> the security guards didn't seem to like that very much, or whatever those things are, I don't know, they're like cubes. Well, I guess as long as we get the cortex away from them, we can smash them pretty easily, so shouldn't be a big deal. Dear Diary, well... I think my new friend Cricket is really coming into her own as a leader. She has learned somehow, or maybe she knew all the time, how to read what the different uh, signs say. And so she's led us all the way to the central station. I don't know what that means, but apparently it's some kind of hub where they sell um, very tasty food. Hank says it's tasty. So we're still wandering around down here, and it's been quite a few nights now since I've seen the sky. Um, I'm kind of starting to really miss seeing my brothers up there, but I'm sure we'll get out. And with good friends like Croesus and Aurora, no, they, that's me, oh, I'm so tired, um, and Hank and Cricket and everybody, I think we'll be okay. We're learning to work together. And I think Cricket's going to come into her own as our leader. She just needs to work on not mixing drinks just because I did it badly and instead saying, come on team, let's go, kind of thing. But yes, I believe in her. She'll get us through this. Oh my, well, it looks like we're finally starting to get a bit of a handle on this place. Uh, there's a lot more resources around here than I previously thought. There's a variety of, of food and drink dispensers, which are amazingly still functioning, even though they've been down here for who knows how many years. Oh, long, long time. I think I can work with this. Uh, if it turns out that we're trapped down here uh, permanently, uh, I should be able to tidy up. And I think we'll be able to sustain ourselves, and I'll be able to sustain everyone else for a, a very long time, possibly even in comfort. Uh, assuming we're trapped down here, uh, I've, I've actually uh, managed to decipher some of the, the writing. Uh, I found uh, an exit sign. Uh, so I think we might be on the right track to actually getting out of here. Maybe. It's hard to say. Uh, in other news, um, we've been, well, sort of captured. Uh, by these automatons that clearly have no understanding of the law. <laughs> they, they thought that we had robbed some, some stores, and we had, but they went and tried to catch Croesus, an oblin, who's like an embodiment of law and order and all that sort of stuff, and they also grabbed me, which is really quite inappropriate. Uh, I, I belong to the party. It's the party's crimes. If there are any crimes, I don't think that's even the case. This place has been abandoned for so long. But I knew that, you know, trying to explain this to automatons is probably quite useless. Fortunately, uh, we were able to shut them down by running away. Hank! Hank ran away with the Cortex. Um, they listened to me. I suggested it, and they listened to me, and they did it. Oh, wonderful. They're finally starting to, to accept that, that I'm, I'm the party leader. And hopefully they'll keep telling me to be the party leader. And I'll 
advise them when they shouldn't drink something, and maybe they actually won't drink it. Won't that be wonderful? We could actually survive down here. Well, we finally found the exit to the big ood place. It was right where I knew it was. It was the door I said we should try. And the very first day that we were there. Gah. Okay, okay. Uh, we went through and we exited. It was great. Um, well, first we fought a little one-eyed, one big-eyed, big-eyed thing. Um, and mixed a bunch of drinks. Um, which was entertaining. And uh, then we left, which is good. And we're now in a place called a central station. Right. Station. Thank you. <laughs> Whatever that is. Um, and the the little glowy Cortex thing is proving to be interesting, as usual. Lots of interesting effects. Oh, did I mention I vaporized some goblins? That was that was quite interesting. They were kind of getting annoying, and then like, they stopped being annoying. It was good. <laughs> but uh, now we ran away from robots. Robots? Metal pots? Metal... Men? Constructs. Constructs? <laughs> Thank you again, Cricket. <laughs> um, and uh, now, because the cortex, cortex got too close to them, and so we were run away, and the Cortex got too far away from them, and now we'll have to smash them without the Cortex being there, and then we'll continue on. And I hope this is the way out of here, because we're walking around in circles. <laughs> Everyone forgot to mention his name. Oh, it? oh yes. Yeah, I've all got things name. We discovered its name. Because it's some unknown creature. No one knew what it was. But um, It was like Awesome John or something? Or? Johnny Cool. Johnny Cool. Johnny yeah. Cool. Because <laughs> I wanted some sort of... I discovered later which song I really wanted. But I was. I had this particular like fast-paced, sort of swingy, rocky song in mind. Mm. And I was, trying to, I was trying to find it. And I, I, I couldn't find it. And I eventually settled on this one. Mm. It was just called like The Legend of Johnny Cool or something. <laughs> and it, anyway, but like the chorus of the yeah. song is Johnny, Johnny Cool, he ain't afraid to break all the rules. And so they decided that this eyeball monster was Johnny Cool. <laughs>